the class let me do a little recap here because today will be our last class for looking at individual <coughs> topics right next class we'll start to put everything together into the class project right and we're gonna work on the Barcelona pavilion by Mies van der Rohe I'll give you guys a blank 3d model right of that project the idea of the class here is that to learn how to 3d model that can be done you know anywhere else the idea is to take a project that is blank and make it as realistic as possible right looking at everything we've covered up to this point as individual topics right we looked at basic modeling, basic materials, advanced materials, uh, advanced lighting with the last class with kind of these things here for the atmosphere. And today we're gonna cover that a few topics that are main, which is the atmosphere, using a sky dome to create a realistic uh, sky scene, which you can change from evening to nighttime to whatever effect you wanna have. I want to cover also the use of 2D elements as um, as a way to reduce uh, file size. For example, you don't want to always use 3D trees, right, in your scene because they're very heavy, right? If you're doing a large forest or large vegetation, we might use 2D trees, right? Or maybe 2D people, right? So we're gonna cover how we can use 2D images to create kind of the illusion of a three-dimensional shape. Right? And then the last thing I want to cover is the creation of realistic grass, right? Because grass, you know, can be used as a material, right? But grass is one thing that is not flat. Right, it has certain fibers, you know, like this thing. So there is a way to uh, use one of the plugins in V-Ray to create a grass that looks realistic, right? And that can be used for other uh, elements. So we'll, we'll see if we can get to all these uh, three things in class today. And as a group, uh, this is kind of the rendering we finished in class last time. If it starts here, that was the that was the last rendering. Again, here it shows the effect that we did, right, of the uh, the water ripples. Here's the effect with no ripples. And we see that what lights do we have up here? Do we have a sun? What do we have here? It was a V-ray light, yes. So a V-ray light that we can shape to any any size. It could be a rectangle, it could be a square, it could be long and narrow, doesn't matter. And then we change the color of the light, right, to create a certain atmosphere, right? And we were trying to match kind of a cinematic effect, you know, of the movie uh, Blade Runner, right? So looking at the effect, in this case, it's a bit darker than normal, but just normal. Not all renderings need to be completely bright, right? Sometimes for the atmosphere, it's good to be a little dark. You can play with the colors. And then we added the effect of, um, of this here. What would you call this effect over here? Water what? Yes, acoustics, or oh, water ripples, right? Yes. And this, you, you see the, the water, when the light hits the water and it reflects back here, right? Could we do this in V-Ray uh, through the actual software? We could, yes. But it'll be extremely time consuming to try to get this. What we do here is make the illusion, right, of this, right? Uh, and I think, you know, it does add to the atmosphere. A lot of our projects deal with water, right? You might have pools or reflecting pools or such things. And sometimes the use of this uh, effect is more like a lighting effect. It's almost like an ambient light that is being bounced off the water and creating a pattern that moves along the walls of your, your building, right? So that could be something interesting. So hopefully, you know, I said you guys can pick here uh, what goes here, right? It could be a car, it could be furniture, it could be, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't matter. As long as it was something that was chosen from the Cosmos library of V-Ray, right? And uh, I think there's already been some problems that where you cannot access the Cosmos library. Can, did you fix yours or no? It still can access. So like I discussed last week, We've been making materials by ourselves, right? Why? Because we don't always have access to the Cosmos browser, right? So we have to learn to make also our own materials if, in case we have a custom material that is not here. But the Cosmos library is not something that comes with V-Ray and it offers uh, really nice looking materials, assets, which means the like cars, people, buildings, furniture, and some vegetation, right? It all comes with V-Ray and it's all pre-made so there's no need to modify them. And they're already made to be extremely realistic in a sense. Uh, so as long as you have internet, you should be able to just, and there's two ways to, to get it. If you see this panel here, so this is the V-Ray panel. I can just take it out from, from here. And it just so it has most of the, the most common V-Ray tabs. If you don't have this panel here, you can also go uh, up here to V-Ray and go to Chaos Cosmos Browser. When I click here, this should load automatically. And as long as you have internet, it should work. I've seen cases where your antivirus will block it, but uh, and, if it, and if it's still not working, if you have internet, 
and you and your V-Ray is working, and this thing still shows, it says that you have no internet, then that's a, past my skills, I think, of IT. So for that, I would say speak to Gene, right? He's our IT guy in our office, right? And he'll probably be able to figure out why somehow you have access to internet, but this is not loading into your software, right? Is that making sense? Anyone else have problems with Cosmos? No? Yeah? You got, okay. I think before you had a question, right? Can you speak up? Yes, okay, so it's not showing yours? Okay, so we'll go over the effect again, yes. So the water effect. So we'll look at this in more detail. In the next project that we're doing, we're, so I'm gonna give you guys, and you guys own this building, right? Right, do you guys know who is Mies van der Rohe? Everyone know who that is? Jamal, you know who that is? <laughs> you don't know who that is? Anyone know who is Mies van der Rohe? Anyone know the building, Barcelona Pavilion? Have you seen it maybe in a history class? It's a very famous yeah. building, yes, okay. Yes, okay, yeah. So so that building, it's a that'll be our main let's say term project for the semester. Once we start working in that building next week, right, that we'll take the building to the end of the semester, right? And that means that we're gonna render it to create uh, views that look daytime, evening, and uh, and daytime, right? It's really to showcase three different uh, scenarios or atmospheres for the building, right? So we'll set up cameras. Uh, and we'll focus on making everything. Because that building is um, it's kind of unique, we'll have to make our own custom material. So we can't really select from here because uh, nothing really here really matches that building. Maybe we can select things like steel, if we have that, or glass, right? But other things, we'll, we'll make our own stuff. So we can go back and forth between these materials and the other ones. The good thing about the ones here is you can quickly start working, right? Without having to go find a material or concrete. There's enough stuff here that covers most buildings, right? You know, for concrete, for metals, for steel, masonry, stone, brick, <coughs> it's all here, and we can get a pretty nice looking collection. All the models also are really high quality. That means that once they render, they will look realistic in the scene, right? All right, so the first question we had, you know, was how did I make, you know, that effect of the water, right? Again? Spotlight, yeah. so in this case, you know, there are different light types here in the scene. We have a, a sun, right, a V-ray sun that we're not using. That's for larger scale um, lighting, right? mostly exterior. For the ins inside, we have a, here we have two things. The lights over here are V-ray lights, right? And these V-ray lights can be set up to be any shape you want, right? They could be spherical, they could be uh, rectangular, they could be square, right? You make them like, like this size, and these are considered to be fill lights, right? And as the name sounds, right, it's just there to fill up any extra light in the space, right? So these lights typically, you don't see them, right? They're either behind the camera or they're above, you know, outside the actual uh, view, right? So all you really see from them is what? All you see is the light they create, right? You don't see the actual source. You don't see the light bulb. You don't see where they came from. So in this case, we put two lights over here. These were V-ray lights. Uh, V-ray lights are really nice. But to create that effect of the water ripples, which is the one here, here, this effect doesn't work with V-ray lights, right? Because they're meant to be fairly realistic in a sense. So what we did here is we use a spotlight, right, to create the effect. And if we go again to the beginning here, if I go here to lights, and we have here different types, you know, photometric, standard, and V-ray, right? We'll use all three of, at one point in the class. For now, for the effect here, I use a standard light and I use a target spot, right? So that's the light for you. And then when I pick this light here, if I go to the properties, we see it's a target spot, the light's on, it's a spotlight, shadows are on, and it has to be V-ray shadows, right? If this is in any other selection here, the light's not going to function, so it could be ray trace shadows, it has to be V-ray shadows. And then going down here, one thing that I did change here, if when I look at this light here, what do you see about the shape of the light? Here's the light. It's a rectangle, right? Yes, because this light, you know, you can choose the, 
uh, the size, right? It could be a spotlight like a typical circle. It could be a rectangle because it can be used for more things than only a light, right? What other things can you try to mimic by having this shape in a project? Circle is square. Yes. So if, I, if I'm trying to imitate a movie projection, right? It's a square element, right? This light can also be used to showcase the idea of uh, movie projections, right? And give the illusion of a movie being playing, you know. So we can change between circle, we can change between um, a rectangle shape, you can make a square. And you see that there's actually two squares, or two rectangles uh, within this uh, light. Why do, do I need two of them? And we have here, you know, the hot spot and the fall off. So one is the hot spot, which is that one inside, and the second one is the fall off. What does that mean? What is that? Anyone? Yes, so I mean, with any light source, right, there's a certain part that's nice and bright, and at one point, what starts to happen to the light as it gets, you know, it starts to bleed away, or starts to fade, right, so it becomes less bright, right? So you can define at what point everything is very sharp and bright, and at what point, so between here and here, the light starts to fade, right? When it gets to past here, the, there's no more light, right? So I can go here and I can kind of change this to make it a much stronger hotspot, a le less hotspot, to make it more realistic in that sense. And then we have the uh, here, circle or rectangle, and we can choose the aspect ratio to define the size of this, you know, widescreen, you know, or, or, you know, different things, parameters for the light. Does that make sense? And then the last thing is, I want to replace the light of this uh, spotlight with an actual map, right? And I'm gonna use a map, you know, to define the shape or feeling of those water ripples, right? So what did I do? You see here under advanced effects, under projective map, right? I went here and I added a map of what, yes? So the hotspot would be more focused? Yeah, like let's say we focus the hotspot on like the bottom and want the light to be up. To like fade out? Yeah. That I believe you can't, no, I can't see how that could be done, yeah. For what, for what reason? No. What are you trying to make? No, I was just wondering. I, I've never tried that and I, I don't see that, um, I don't think you can do that, yes. But that's actually a very good question, yes. Can you fade the, uh, the effect? And then what I did here is I chose, where's my materials? I know I showed that in class last time. I don't have it here. But I showed a, I showed a material of what? So it's not the one that goes here under, under the map. What did I use? Yes, yeah, so just we'll go online, you know. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, And I did this one here. Right, that's it, right? And ideally, you want to keep one that is neutral, right? So convert the image to black and white, right? It might be blue in that sense. And then what you have here is what's gonna happen is the image takes on pretty much, um, like everything, you go from black to white, right? How's the black to white work in renderings, right? In transparency, in glossiness, right? If everything is just black, what, what does it mean? Huh? Pretty much, yes. As it goes to white, so here, what it does here, parts that are white, are let's say uh, an opening, right? The light goes past it completely. As it gets darker, it becomes more like translucent, right? So the light starts to filter, you know, where you have strong light penetrating to this, here's pretty much no light, and anything gray is less light. And that's how you get the effect of the water ripples uh, showcasing uh, here, there. Like here. So these parts here, right, are the white areas on the map, right, where the light gets to penetrate. And then here it gets a little darker, a little lighter to give the effect of the water ripples, all based on this gradients between those two settings. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. Any other questions from last assignment? No? Jaime? You're good, yeah? Anyone else? Okay. So in that case, let's try to move on to those three topics for today, right? 
So the first thing here is let's keep working with this scene you, just to, uh, to make it simple for us. I'm going to just add a plane to this. So I'm going to add a, let's add a box here and just give it a base here because we need to create shadows and just go down like this. So we have this, right? Let's just give it a very basic material. Also, you will notice that this material here is from the Cosmos browser, right? Those tend to be a little more time consuming to render because of the realism it has, you know, the reflections and such things. So keep that in mind as you use them. All right, so let's just make everything uh, for now like this. Actually, no, let's do something else. Let's, yes. Yes, we can do that, yes. Okay. You're right, I didn't cover that before last class. So, yes. All right, so let's do that. So, the water, let's do one that looks actually realistic, right? The one that we chose here is lacking a few things. Where is it? So, okay, so let's stay with this scene here. Let's make a change to it. I'm going to now, so for to, to get a, a water effect that looks realistic, you have to work with the sun, right? It doesn't work with these artificial lights. Right? So the first thing we have to do is we have to make the water, right? So let's go here and make the water. Let's find some empty space somewhere. Let's go. <coughs> All right, let's go here and just do a uh, get material. We'll do a uh, V-Ray MTL. Yes. No. So yeah. So that's a good question. There is a limit of um, of preview elements here. So if you go here, you know, there's a certain amount here. You can go down here. It doesn't mean that there's no more materials. You can actually have infinite number of materials here. The problem is you can only visualize or preview these areas here, right? What you do here is, let's say, for example, uh, I apply this concrete to my building, right? <coughs> and it's all scaled properly. I like it. It's not going to change, right? So I'm done with it, right? What I can do here is I, I can go to this material, which is the one I have here, and I can replace it. So I can go here and go get material and do V-Ray MTL and start fresh, make a new one, right? This one didn't change, right? It's still there, right? But if I decide that I want to modify this material, what do I do? So you find any empty, you know, any one of these um, areas, it doesn't matter which one. I click here, I use my eyedrop tool, and I click here. It will reload it back here again, and then I can modify it. Right? That's kind of the process of those things. Uh, it's a little bit because, again, it's easier because if this is, if this had, you know, like, I don't know, 200 materials, it'll be very hard to scroll down here and scroll down. It will get lost, right? So it's limited for a certain amount of materials. And the idea is to use the eyedrop tool to just simply go around and click, load it, click, load it, and then modify it as you go with the materials. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right, so let's do a, a, a more natural looking landscape for this scene. So we've been using boxes, which is pretty much a flat you know, element. But let's make, make it more natural. Let's make it something that is organic. So we're gonna use a mesh that we can modify the individual points to create uh, hills and cavities and make it more like a landscape scene. So if you go to the plus sign, you go to the little sphere, and you go down here to where it says, let's see here, nerve surfaces. What are nerves? Maybe in Rhino you've seen it before? Like They're points, yes. Points within the, uh, the what? Yes, exactly. Points in the surface or the geometry that we can select individually and adjust them differently. So I'm going to select here nerve surfaces, and then I'm going to use a point surface. So first of all, let's switch to a top view so I can see the whole area here. There's my building, right? I'll do a point surface. And you see here, before you click here, there's uh, how many points you want. In this case, there's going to be four points let's say going vertical, and four points going horizontal, right? Do I want more points? Do I want less points? How do I define those details? I mean, the more precise you want to work, right, 
the more points you want to modify. But if you add too many points, then it becomes very difficult, right? So I would say to start, you know, let's use just eight by eight. So eight points across and eight points the other way. Once you have eight by eight, then just go here and just draw, right? For now, it doesn't really matter the size. It's gonna cover the whole area here. And now let's look at it here. So now you should be able to see, this is my surface, right? And can you see the points? Here, right, these are all individual points. So the idea now is that I can modify the surface in a very organic way. So first of all, I can select the surface, select it, right? Right now the points you cannot see because currently it's not being selected. Once you pick it, right, and you go to properties, and you go to NURB surface, we can do points. Now they're visible, right? We can see all the points going as columns and as, uh, as rows, right? And we can go here, we can select individual points, individual rows, individual columns, uh, rows and columns, or everything, right? So now I can do this, right? I can go here and I can start, let's say, take this point, bring it up, right? You see a change? I can go to this point, right? Bring it down. Or I can do, you know, the whole row. I can do, let's say, the whole thing there, I can lift it up, like this. I can make the whole one here go down to create like a hillside. You go a little more here, like this. And I, I can play around, you know, with, you know, just making, you know, like this if you want, right? Or just make a nice, simple landscape. This will use more in the term project. For now, it's just kind of a preview of what we can do eventually. The key thing to be careful here and keep in mind is that when you raise the points too high, what's going to happen? inside the building here. So right now it's okay here, right? But if I were to, let's say, let's find a point over here by the car. There's a point over here. If I move this point really high, then it starts to now to penetrate inside the building, right? You could, you know, um, you could make everything here nice how we want it, and then how could you fix this part afterwards? Once you define what everything's going to look like. From your you know current knowledge, what could you do? I mean the hard thing is getting the landscape correct, right? Once everything is, is good, you're happy with the results, how can I take care of the interior? Yeah, or other words, you can subtract it right from there, right? So you make a box in the inside, bring it down and subtract those inner cavities, right? Why? Because if, if you cannot try to work here a little higher, a little lower it might limit you because some things are sticking inside the space here. So get it to be whatever you want, right? And then just simply just, you know, uh, carve it out afterwards. For now, I'm just gonna take it out from here. All right, so for now, this is my very simple landscape that I have here, right? nothing too crazy. And you see, I made the base fairly thick, so this way nothing's sticking past that afterwards. So you can check here that everything is above. Here, you can see that this corner here is actually not touching the base. So I will make it a little higher, like this. Otherwise, you're gonna get shadows below that and it will look very fake. All right, so this is the first step, creating a very simple undulating surface in your scene, right? Okay, anyone lost? No? Now that we have this, what can we do? Let's, you know, let's for now apply a very simple material. We have this grass over here, right? Just bring it there. Right? Like everything we selected, we do UVW map. I'll use in this case planar, and then we'll do map scalar. Right. So there's the first thing. We have something you know, on the ground, right? Is this grass, you know, um, good? I mean, it's right now, it's just flat, right? Like this. So depending how close it is, right? If this grass is far away, it's probably okay, right? But if it's very close to you and very near to the camera, it's gonna start to look fairly fake, right? So we're gonna work later on trying to take a, a, a chunk of this grass and make it look realistic, right? With actual grass blades, 
and having to control the, the size. We can make it, you know, uh, tall grass. Uh, we can make it uneven, and we can play with the density of the grass to make it more interesting. All right. All right. So that's first thing. Let's go back now to the question that let's make a water that looks realistic, right? The scene. So for that question, and what makes water appear realistic? What do we need to capture? All right, so let's look at water here. Um, one second. Again, we have a very shallow pool, right? So it's not like it's something very deep, right? Uh, one second. All right, so I'm look, doing a, a quick search here for this. I type beach water caustics right and we get this right so if you go to where the water is fairly shallow right or it's very clear right you're gonna get this effect you know um, happening beneath the water right whether it's the pool whether it's the ocean uh, this is what makes water so yeah I want to create something like this right that, that's my goal right right and this is this looks really good you know it is kind of time-consuming right because it's a lot of work to try to um, to make this but let's try to do it in class so uh, so the, we'll leave this open on my side here, and let's try to make it. So the first thing is, let's go to the material tab, right? And let's get a blank material over here, right? We're gonna call this water. Actually, we could start with something else, right? Can I use my basic glass? Basic glass actually is a great start to the water. So I'm gonna copy the basic glass that I did before. I'm gonna change the name to water, right? And for the most part, what is missing now from this material? Let's make it bigger. So, how do I get this? Come on, load. What's missing from this material? Yeah, what is this? The bump, right? Yes. And color, right? So right now, I mean, does water have color? Huh? Not really, right? Color is based on the water's uh, what? Reflection or the, uh, it could be, okay, so is the sand underneath the water like white sand, right? Is the sand darker? Are there any algae in the water, right? Is it dirt? It makes it green, uh, it makes it uh, brown. If the water's more blue like this, like magenta, why is the water more blue? Yes. The sand, mostly, if you go to a nice beach, the, the sand is white, right? The water's clear, the sky's blue, right? It's called all about reflection, right? That's why the water looks more blue. The sand is not, you know, blue, right? Uh, water really has no color, right? So it just, those elements create the, the effect, right? So actually, before we get to the water and make it in detail, we need something to uh, apply to. So let's go here, and I'm gonna go in this corner here. So let's make a new camera in our scene. Let's go to here. So first of all, these two lights that I did before, I'm going to now just uh, turn them off. So let's go to lights. This one I'm going to turn off. Now you see they turn black, so now they're off. And we're gonna use only the sun. Currently in this scene, there's no sun, so we'll put one afterwards. Also this light here, we're gonna turn off because we're not trying to fake it. We're gonna make a real water effect. And we'll also turn off this light. There it is. Now I'm gonna switch two cameras and copy this camera that I have here. And let's move it over to this side here. And I think the car, we don't need anymore. So I'm going to just hide it. And I'm gonna switch to cameras. And I'm gonna move here because I wanna look at this area here. Right now you can't see really any water there. So we're gonna go a little closer to the ground. Okay, and we have here water, right? Obviously right now you can't see it, right? And we have here the concrete. Now we need a sun. So we'll make our typical V-ray sun, V-ray sun here. And the idea is we need the light to go through these cavities. So let's go just put it for now here. 
Uh, yes, put a sky. Then we'll take this and gonna put it right above the cavity, right? So we get light penetrating to this opening. All right, let's go here to light. That's my son, right? Yes. And I think we can see a little bit there. my son here okay there's my son I did have one before so I'm gonna put it right above my my space here and maybe a little bit I don't know like this okay, one thing I need to change I did before we'll come back to this in a second this is how it's I'm trying to make it default so we go through all the steps All right, so let's take a rendering of this like this. We have a sun. We currently ha do have water there. Okay, let's just, uh, all right, let's make it more simple so we don't take too much time with the, uh, or actually let's, uh, let's see here. That's off, that's off, that's off, that's on. This would be our base image for working. So the effect that we have here only happens when the light hits the water, right? It's not going to happen in shadow. So there's our light coming in. There's where it hits the water, right? And here's where we have to see if it's going to look realistic or not. So at this point, let me do cancel. Let's do a region right here. This is the part that's important for us. So we are using the, the custom materials here, so a little bit time consuming with the space. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have the light, right? But we don't have the effect at all, right? So this would be our base image. We can start to modify it. All right, so the next thing here is let's make our material. So let's go here. We have the basic glass that we, we renamed to water. Everything's gonna be the same here. The main change here is, let's go down here and just uh, give it a map. So we go here to materials, right? We go to map, uh, bump here, go to no map, and then go down here, look for the one called noise. So we're gonna add a noise map. Noise works really well to make the illusion of, of uh, ripples in the water. So just drop noise there. One second, something looks different here. Sorry, it should be under general. So look under general right here, and then it should be, where is it? Here, noise. Okay, good. Now let's make this bigger here. All right, do you see now a change there? And for this to work properly, there's two important settings here that we need. Uh, how can I draw here? So we have the bump size, which is currently 30, right? And then if I go inside the noise area here, we have then a size here of 25. How do these things work together? Right. What does each one do? What do you guys think? I need to draw here and I just need Photoshop. I forgot if we have it here.
I guess not. Uh, how do I draw here without using Photoshop? We can use paint. Very basic. It's that this should always work. So we have bump and we have size, right? We just call here size, right? So let's talk about these are two important elements that the best way is to visualize them. Okay, here, right? So let's go here, right? And let me do some drawing here. Okay. <coughs> so we have this, right? Let's say here. Right? This controls the. That's the bump, right? So bump controls the height of the wave, right? And the size multiplier controls the, the what? Is it the size? Right. What does that do? So the bump simply is a vertical signal. It's the thing going up and down, right? And the size controls the amount of uh, waves in the same area. Are they more spread out? Are they more close together, right? So combine this thing together, you can set up, you know, uh, the effect of the, the water, right? So the bump, again, is, is the height, the size is the frequency of the wave, and those things. So right now, leave it default, you know, right now, my default setting here, and it's always gonna be the same, it's currently the bump is 30, and the size is 25, right? So leave it alone, just render it, and from there, we'll make a modification. So select it. We go here and we apply it. And of course, we're not gonna see much because it's simply, you know, uh, transparent. But let's look at it here now as a test and see if you guys can spot any difference. And be very patient. Do you see anything? That's, uh, I mean, you can see that there's some movement here, right? With this, right, a little bit. So this is taking a little bit longer than I, so pretty much um, all this red stuff. I'm going to just make it, make the, select, you know, the concrete that we used before and just make it our very basic concrete that we had before, which is the, uh, we had before this one here. <coughs> so now it's kind of a, uh, you know, because this material has no reflection, no refraction, it's just basic, right? So it should render much quicker than the other one. Let's see again. But still, you know, it's still, you know, a little bit of a, have to be a bit patient with this. Not there yet. You can see that movement here, right? Of the bump, a little bit. Can you guys see that? What, that? what can we do to make the water appear more realistic? Can we give it a color? Yeah. We could, yes. Yeah, we can make the base of different materials. Uh, right now, everything's grouped together, so it would take some work to do that. But yeah, just one option. Uh, let's try also to give the water some some color. Right? Sometimes the water has a. Um, how do we give uh, color? You guys should know. 
So let's go here to the uh, water, right? Let's go where it is. Here's the water, right? From these settings that we have here, reflection, refraction, translucency, uh, what can we do to uh, control color? Yes, so right now this thing is, uh, it shows us white. You know, for water we need slight coloration, not even. Almost nothing. And it's hard to, to leave like that for now. Let's, uh, and then at the same time, we know that the waves right now are too big, right? So let, let's start to modify the map. So the bump will leave it the same, but let's make it the, the frequency smaller. Right now it's 25, let's make it 15. And see if that makes any difference in seeing our wave. I'm not sure where all this red color is coming from. It could be the uh, the car that we had, right? Uh, it was red in color, right? Yeah, so maybe that's where all the red's coming from. So maybe I'm going to delete it from the scene. So guys, for those that want to take the, uh, the VR class, it's not going to run in the fall. We're going to make it run only in the spring because of... Uh, so in the fall, I will teach my um, Japanese class, uh, this class, and the uh, portfolio class. Arch I yeah. yeah. Well, my specialty is uh, Japanese architecture. Yeah. So I have a class that does uh, Japanese architecture, modern and traditional. Yes. Yeah. Huh? It's an elective, yes, architectural, yes. All right, so I think you can see now they're getting closer, the, right, the waves. Oh no. A little bit, right? So, all right, let's let's keep going. I think we're almost there. We're at uh, 15. Let's make it five, right? And you see what's happening to my preview. I gotta take a longer pause every time I I talk. So you can see now they're much smaller, right? So and then also so let's leave like that and let's uh, let's do even a, a smaller region just for comparison between left and right. They are yes, and just this summer uh, I don't want to teach this summer. I'm gonna take it off. So um, uh, I think th there will be courses in summer, like design courses are there. Uh, there will be some uh, electives. Uh, but uh, I'm not running this summer the animation class that I typically. Well, again, you guys are already taking it, so you don't need it. Uh, there might be the portfolio class might run in the summer. But the VR class has never run in the summer. Uh, all right, so is that getting a little more like water now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's not too bad, but still it's missing one key factor, right? And that is what? Okay, not this. Yes, where is that sample that we had before? Here. All right, we have the waves, right? We have the little, but we're missing this kind of white element, right? Which is the light being magnified through the water. So that requires, you know, special settings. So this is how you get your basic water, right? Now the next level is to make it look realistic. All right, so let's look at that. All right, so let's minimize this for a bit. And now let's go over the settings. First thing is your material, right? Step one is uncheck effect shadows. That's the first thing. Next, go to your render setup. Under V-Ray, no, sorry, under GI, Global Illumination, go under caustics <coughs> we have to turn this on to be able to recognize the, the caustics and create the effect so turn that on that's the second step the third step is your sun so if you look at the sun here when I click it we have a green radius here green circle that green is the area of photons uh, photons is what yeah. makes the, you know the effect of water ripples and for this to work the photons need to cover the entire area of your, of your water. So pretty much just click on the sun, go to the right side here and scroll down 
and you see under sampling photons emit radius and we can make the green area bigger right here we can make it uh you know as big as you want like this right so i'm gonna make it big enough so it covers my entire kind of opening here right so all the light that is coming down to here has photons you know in the light all right so that's our third step and let's do yes let's try again let's do uh, a piece over here and compare now left to right and hopefully it works Let's get in there. Okay, not bad. How does it look now? And this starts to resemble our effect over here. Again, the, the color is different, right? That's you know hard to match. Uh, this rendering is very low definition, so it's very pixelated, right? The effect. But that's pretty much the effect you get, right? And you see that the effect also, you see, you might see also here some light bounce, right? Because when the light hits here, it penetrates, but at the same time also reflects back, you know, and casts, you know, that effect on the walls, right? So this is pretty much how you get your water, right? right. Is that a, and again, this computer is very slow, right? So this really shouldn't take too, too much time. It's not really a crazy uh, effect. Uh, the main, main thing here is that those three steps that I, I did to make it right, uh, if you're making regular water, make sure those things are off. Otherwise, it, it, it just adds extra time to your renderings, right? So if you're not using caustics, go to the render setup and simply, um, again, go here and do um, uncheck it, right? Only turn it on when you plan to use water and when you want the water to have the effect of these elements. After that, you can make the water any color you want, right? You can do any effects. You know, you can play with the uh, the noise, you can play with the um, the spacing to make it more spread out, you know, or smaller, right? depending on the effect. And you see the uh, here is with the uh, no photons, here with the photons right, are working right. Any questions? No. Okay. Anyone else want me to try something else? Any questions? No? Yes, Ajimal. Yes. That, you know, that's, it doesn't do it as, as well, right? You have to kind of exaggerate uh, some things. Like you see it over here, right? The photos, right? Yeah. And those ripples only work at certain, let's say, the, you know, the, uh, it's a much darker space. So somehow the light is at an angle, it hits the water and then it, it throws it at the same angle against the wall, right? But right now this area is still too bright, so there'll have to be maybe some type of uh, canopy over here to make the wall darker and then allow these spots to, to be brighter, right? So let's see if we can, um, uh, let's do a bigger area here. Yes, I saw a hand over there, yes. Fire? Yeah. I've never tried to do fire in 3D Max. Uh, I guess you could, but it, it, it's just so time consuming that it's, for architects, I, think, I don't think it's worthwhile. For that, I would go to Lumion or Twin Motion, right, that I teach. And those have built in fire uh, uh, elements, right? That you just drop it in and creates fire. Right? Fire is more like an effect for animations or maybe uh, uh, gaming, right? So it's not really used uh, for something like this because uh, what you could do is do fire that is to uh, an image, maybe afterwards in After Effects. Yes. I mean, you are able to put here fog, right? Those things, but I just, you know, um, 
it's not worthwhile that the amount of time it takes to, to do it right uh, to our renderings. You see how much it takes to do like simple water like this, right? It does add quite a bit of time. And you can probably see Jamal right here, right? Some of the light already bouncing off here. It's not very strong right now. So what you could do here is if you go back here to the uh, GI, right? And you go to the caustics, there's some things here that you can modify. If you see over here where it says basic, right? So most settings have basic here. But what you can do here is you can click again and it gives you advanced, right? Some have uh, basic, medium, and advanced. So it gives you more settings. When you go to advanced, it gives you uh, this one here, multiplier. That means that you're gonna multiply the effect of the light. So if I make this say three here, this would be here three times stronger and this would be three times brighter. The, so if I click, let's say here, and we have a few spots over here and we render it again, <coughs> it'll be a little stronger. You just gotta balance out the water to the wall because it might be too strong. See now the water is, you can see it's overly bright. This is stronger, but now the water looks fake, right? Unless you're making a water that glows in the dark, you know, that could be also an effect. You like it? Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. A little bit, yeah. So again, I, I did three. So one is default setting. So you can play with those settings here a bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. You can do different things here. You see also the lighting starts to change because now the light is emitting also, sorry, the water now is emitting light. So it gives a certain atmosphere to the, uh, to the scene. All right. 9.55, okay, I think we're doing good. All right, what's next here? Yes. I'm sorry? I can't hear you, sorry. Check the mirror? Yeah. For what? Sorry. Uh, yes, I, I checked it because people keep adding me to the mirror boards. I don't know why. Last night I deleted all those boards, so now it should work. Yeah. It's working? It's yeah, so yeah. I don't know why I, I get tagged on multiple mirror boards and then it eats up my space. So yeah, so please keep posting everything on mirror boards. All right, so since we're doing now details, let's keep doing details here and let's focus on making realistic grass, right? Another very focused. The other topics, you know, the 2D trees, you know, uh, we can always move it to the next class, but the key things today is the water, right? And then making the realistic grass in our scene. So let's go to those steps here. All right, so let's talk about grass, right? The plugin that we have here is not meant to be used only for grass, but anything that has fibers, right? Which could be what? What could I also make with this? Carpets, yes. You can make hair, you know, if you're making a character, right? Uh, edit it, you can make spaghetti, you know, whatever that has fibers, you know, it works, right? Once you have the fibers, you can define, are they cylindrical, are they flat, right? Uh, in different things, you can define the density. But the problem of that uh, plugin is that when you apply it to something, it applies to the entire surface, right? So for example, if I, would, if I was to apply the plugin to a, to a box, right? What's the problem there? It's going to apply the fibers to every single side of the box, which is how many sides? Six, right? So, and maybe all I want is really the top, right? So having here a plane is better because it'll be applied only to the top, right? The next problem is you're applying fibers, right? You're applying geometry to the entire shape, right? So if I were to apply that plugin to this shape, what's one problem that could happen? you're applying billions of fibers to that plane, right? Because the whole thing, so the idea here is to define where your camera is and pick out a section to just apply the, the detail. Because in the past, I've made a mistake that I applied to everything and it will, might crash your computer. It's just too much geometry for a scene. So before you even start to apply it, you know, you know set up another camera. Let's put one here. Here, copy. All right, 
and let's get close to here. Where can we go? I'm gonna get very close to this edge. And I don't wanna see it back there, so I'm gonna turn it there. Okay, so then what I see now is just this over here, right? So what do I need to do now? What do you guys think? Yes. So let's see, how can we make it more realistic? Let me think about it. All right, let's make something like this. Let's, um, we'll, keep, we'll keep part of that grass as being you know, 2D grass, but it, you really want to focus it into a, a small area. So I'm gonna make this over here. I'm gonna make another shape over here. And what do you think I'm making here? <coughs> Any ideas? I'm gonna take this. And then I'm going to subtract, go to uh, compound objects for a Boolean, subtract this and start picking. Make a cavity there. Next, I'm going to add on top of this, uh, let's put a plane. Because I get only one surface with my snaps on. Uh, right click it. We want endpoint. Turn out the snaps and then move it a little bit below here. All right, so there's my focus. I'm going to make, let's say, maybe a tree goes here, right? This is a little cavity for grass, you know, those parts you see in the city, right? For, um, And let's just, uh, we'll give this thing, you know, materials. Let's do it wood for now. It's fine. All right. And with this, okay, so we're going to apply here. So as a base material, because the grass, the way it works is there's the base material, which is the plane, and then we add the plug into the plane. So think of the base material as the ground, right? That's where you have the dirt, right? So for the base, I'm gonna make it grass, like this. Actually, we'll do it in a second so you guys can see it. So let's leave it now. Let's first make this thing red so it stands out. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick this plane, right? And before you hit the plugin, save the file. Uh, it's been, you know, it, it tends to happen that sometimes the first time you use it, it crashes. And 3D Max is very good, but it's, I, I, I now kind of know when it's gonna crash every time. So before you hit the plugin, save it. So select the plane. Let's go here to uh, uh, the sphere. Go down to where you see V-Ray down here. And we're gonna use, come on. It's thinking. V-Ray, okay. And we have here different V-Ray plugins. We're gonna use, which one do you think? If you guys can see that far, <laughs> I know it's not so sharp. But we're gonna use V-Ray Fur, right? Here. So watch what happens here when I apply V-Ray Fur, right? We get this, right? That's a very simple uh, preview of what's going to happen. All right, it doesn't mean the grass is gonna be that dense, it's just a preview, yeah. So right now, and actually before I do any change or before I modify anything, let's just take a rendering of this and see how it looks. Uh, let's go here. Okay, so good. What does that look like? Does it look like grass yet? But, you know, again, this could be used for fur, for hair, right? For anything that has a, a you know, certain structure.
let's see, this is taking very long, so let's see what we can do to make it better. Um, we have turned off, let's turn off the uh, caustics. We don't need that anymore. Uh, let's uh, isolate this. I'm going to select just this. Sorry, the computer's freezing. If it starts to freeze like this, like it's doing, don't start clicking buttons very fast because it's gonna crash that much faster. So just uh, give it a chance to catch up. There we go. Maybe. Okay, there we go, yes. So I'm gonna pick this not the uh, and isolate okay let's look at it from the make sure I'm looking at it from the camera so let me do one second here uh, here's my camera view <coughs> there it is okay like this I'm just gonna cancel here for a second and just do a little piece over here. All right, so we can start to analyze this. What is this missing to start to look like grass? Yes. Color, Color yes, okay. What else? What does grass look like? Is grass cylindrical? No, right? All right, so there's kind of a, a basic shape of, of this, right? So let's start to look at the settings here. Let's, you know, select the area here, turns white, go to properties. And the key settings are the first kind of five here, right? The first one's the length, right? So right now this grass is about one foot, so I can make it more, right? To make it tall grass, you know, short grass, such things. So right now it's about a foot inside. So leave it like this, fine. Next is the radius. What does that do? That's the uh, the size of the uh, grass, you know, the cylindrical size. So we're gonna make it thinner. Uh, how how small? I forgot. Let's try. Okay, let's try three thirty seconds. Uh, gravity. So gravity. What is gravity? Right. That right. So you guys can see better here. Gravity just controls the. This right. And then we have bend. which I don't know what is the difference. They're both the same thing, right? Ben creates this, right? And gravity creates this. Then we have the taper. What does taper mean? Yes. Everyone know what that means, taper? It goes to a point, right? Does grass taper? It's, yes, it does, right? So let's, you know, uh, give it a taper. So let's go, um, I think what I always use is point 0.9, just so we don't waste time this and let's try again to uh, look at this over here so let's do now kind of this side over here and compare those two so at this point we made the grass thinner right and we gave it a taper but of course what's gonna happen with, when we make it thinner now we have bold spots. exactly I was gonna do the same example yes uh, we have bold spots right in the grass right so the next setting is what do I have to do, right? Make the grass more dense, right? All right, so right now, okay, it's not too bad there. Before I make it denser, let's give it a material. So this is actually very simple. All you do is apply the same material that you have here to the grass. And there's no need to do UV map scale or anything. Just select the grass like this, go to materials, and apply this one here. So the nice thing is when you apply this material, do you see here how this material is, it's not really all green, right? There's some parts that are dark, lighter, you know, 
it applies uh, randomly this material to everything. So every blade of grass is not the exact same color, right? It, it's randomized, so it actually makes it uh, more realistic. So we take it, apply it, and that's it. You're done. No need to do any scaling. Next, we need more grass. The density is not there yet. So if you go down here, you see a part that says distribution, and we see per area. That's the density. Right now it's 0 0.2. So let's do a 0.4 is double, point, let's try 0 0.6. Make it three times more dense, and see if that makes any difference for us. And the reason why I left the bottom red for now is so that I can see the ground, right? I can see how much denser I have to get to make it look realistic. Eventually, I'll apply also grass to the bottom, but for now we can see uh, that 0.6 is still not enough grass, right? But if you look closer here, you see that the grasses have different colors, right? Some of them are lighter, darker green, and it starts to look a little bit more, I don't know why, and of course some of them are white because there are some points of, uh, of the material that are white. So how far should we go in density? Right now we have 0.6. We, I think, huh? You mean double it? So 1.2? Okay, let's double that again. Do 1.2 and try again. Okay, so we get in there. Alright, looking a little better, right? Starting to look like grass, I hope. What do you guys think? How's that look? Yeah? Okay. Do we need to go a little higher in density? So the density is going to vary depending on the grass height. Right now this is one foot tall, so it's pretty dense, but uh, if I made it, let's say, four inches tall, then you're gonna need more density, right? Depending. Now let's just make the the, the base also uh, grass. So let's just click on the there the base, right? I'll make it the same material. This one. I think I made it. No, that one. This one, yeah. All right, so it is grass, yeah, that's good. All right, so let's try again here, now with that selected. You can see now that those areas are now filling with the, with the grass material, right? And it starts to fill in, let's say, those bold spots in the, uh, in the material. And now we have something like this, right? So how could this be used as a besides grass? What could you guys make with this? Maybe a sculptural piece, right? A lamp, a carpet, right? A shack carpet, for example. Uh, uh, you know, numerous things, right? But for grass, actually, it works really well, right? Uh, when used in small areas, right? I wouldn't apply it to the whole scene, but for here, actually, it's pretty good, right? Eventually, we'll use it again in the pavilion space, and we'll define an area to make it more, uh, we'll put a tree there, uh, some other elements, and focus on the grass, right? And how we can start to extract maybe a piece of this large um, landscape here that'll be used only for those grass settings. Any questions? No? Okay. So, we're almost there. I wanna keep the video, I won't keep it, you know, um, but I do wanna cover one more thing in class today. We already covered uh, the water, we covered the grass. What else do we need here? Huh? Shadow? For what? Well, it, it has shadow, yes. It just uh, is very small, so you can't see it, yes. Um, but let's start to add some 2D elements, right? So uh, as I said before, uh, in a scene, you might have 2D trees 
and you might have 3D trees, right? When are you gonna use each one? Yes, come on. Okay, yes, also makes sense with that, yes. Uh, the main thing is obviously the size, right? A real a 3D tree might be 70 megabytes in size. A 2D tree might be nothing, one kilobyte, say, in size, right? Yes. You could, yes, but what's the uh, what do you lose from that? Yes. Let, let's make him here and see which one looks better, right? Because that's what I used to do a long time ago. I did it, yeah. Uh, also, depending on the complexity of the scene, if the tree is in front of a person, a car, a window, you want the shadows to hit everything, right? Nicely. And sometimes we use trees, uh, sometimes we use 2D trees not to see them, but just to create shadows in our scene, right? And this is a very simple process, so this won't take very long time. So let me just, uh, I'll stick to this area here. Let's, um, I just wanna move this camera a little smaller here. Okay, this is my scene. So the tree I'm going to use is, let's start with a 2D tree, right? So 2D trees are good for um, simple scenes, right? Sometimes they're good for the background because they're far away. 3D trees are typically very close to the camera where you want to see every single branch. But if you have a, a good enough quality 2D tree, it looks the same, right? The main thing is that this tree needs to be a PNG file, right? Because that PNG file, you can convert it to other files to use here. So the, and also, and what surface would I use to apply this tree to, to map it? I'm gonna make a plane, right? A very simple plane. I don't know what that is there, but let's make a plane. It doesn't really matter what size it is. Just go here to the uh, primitives plane. Let's make it over here. Like that, right? Let's just take it and isolate it. Go to a 3D view. Okay, there. And I'll give you guys a, a 2D tree to use in class. Pretty much as based off a PNG file. So we have to make a new material. That material, uh, it is to make the tree. So let's go here and let's get a you know, get material. We'll start with a basic material. We'll call it 2D tree. That. And go down to, we can, everything here we can ignore. This we don't need, so that part is easy. Go down to <coughs> diffuse. Go down to general, bitmap. And you might have seen that I put some files in your Dropbox folder yesterday. So I gave you guys some of these files here. I gave you guys SkyDome, IS Lights, 2D Trees, and these we'll use little by little. So for now, uh, let's go to the 2D Trees folder, and you're gonna see there are three files, right? One file is the original file, which is the PNG, right? The PNG file is good because it has no what? Back, right, so, so from this PNG file, I made two files. These are JPEGs. So the first file, oops is this. The first file is simply the tree, right, with the black background, right? That's your diffuse file. And that's loaded here in diffuse, right? I'm gonna take this file and just drag it and drop it under opacity. Uh, beforehand, look at this here. This is how it looks. Right? Black background, the tree's in color. I'm gonna drop it here into opacity as a inst no, as a copy and then I'm going to change it. Let's go here now. Ignore that, yeah. Go back to the folder, and now I'm gonna load for the opacity this one. The same black background, but the tree is now in white, right? So when you overlap two black backgrounds, they'll cancel each other and make it transparent. So now for the opacity, I'm gonna put the same tree in white and the background in black. And watch what happens here. Everything white is now transparent, right? And all we have left is the tree, right? And this tree is good because um, someone took a long time to actually erase, right, all the little cavities inside the tree, right? Otherwise, you know, you can just erase the outline and then what happens to the shadow? 
it's just one big shot right but when you have you know cavities here that are different sizes throughout the tree it creates a shadow that's different colors it might be dark lighter medium and it creates a variety of shadows and depending on the size of the opening it makes the shadow more blurry or more sharp so that adds realism to the to the image once you have this made already then the easy part is you can just drag it and drop it here right and there's my tree right from here you know you can always go back to the uh, properties and you can make it whatever size you want you can stretch it you can change the proportion of the tree and start to put it in your scene so any file in the same process it could be a person right at the same process you could put a car you could put a bench if it, if it meets the uh, the perspective of your scene so now let's just use the street for a second here let's go to um, let's go here so the next important thing here is for this tree to work properly it has to relate directly to the camera right so this is my camera here right and this is my tree is that gonna look okay how should the tree face the camera in relation yes exactly it should be perpendicular right because then we have the most surface area to cover the tree let's say we do it here like this right then I'm gonna put the tree let's say over here there's my tree maybe I'll bring it down now here set it on my planter that's pretty good there all right, and we can, uh, yeah, it's a little big, so we can lower the size. Okay. So there are two ways. We can do this rendering like this, right? To get a tree, but this tree is probably too close to the camera, right? You're gonna start to see things looking fake, right? So if, it, if it's far away, <coughs> they look great. You can put it all around the background because you can copy it, you can multiply it, you can put a thousand trees. It won't change the file size. For this tree being this close to the camera, it has a better use of this. If you put the tree behind the camera, like this, where you don't actually see it, like this, right? And we have a blank wall, right? And we have the light, where's my sun? Uh, over here. So the sun, again, is parallel to the, to the camera, right? And again, perpendicular to the, uh, to the surface. This, right we can look at this here and now the idea here is to get this tree to project on the wall right let's do this again okay so another detail that makes the renderings look realistic is shadows right if you just put shadows you know throughout the scene right it breaks up the space, it breaks up the materials, it makes it uh, more relatable to you because you see trees every single day in life. So uh, the trees actually have a, a great effect in the scene. And many times, you know, uh, you put just trees behind the camera just to project uh, uh, this sense into the space. Yeah. Again, this is, uh, you know, this is uh, it's lower than it should be, even for something this, this simple. So you think you guys should be okay in your computers with this. So let's do this and I think I'll give you guys a break and then we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. All right, so for today we covered three main topics, right? Water, grass, and 2D trees, right? Next week, you know, we'll start working on the Barcelona Pavilion. So make sure that um, you kind of catch up any missing work up to now, right? Put everything in the mirror board. Next class, I'm gonna give you guys a blank model of pavilion space, right? That has no materials, right? And then we'll take that model and go little by little until it's fully mapped, right? With uh, reflections, glossiness, transparencies, we work also on the surrounding areas by adding 2D trees, 2D trees, uh, water to the space, 
and then we work on the daytime, <coughs> evening, and night rendering, so the space, right? And we try to make it as real as possible, right? So that's kind of an example here of the shadows, right? They're still kind of working here because this thing is still moving here, but you can see that the shadows are have different edges, right? Right now it's fairly noisy because this thing is still working here and rendering the, the effect. And again, it's one way to break up the, the very large wall in space. Any comments, any questions from you guys? Aya? No? Anybody back there? Questions? No? Okay. Is everyone pretty much caught up with the renderings? No? Anybody still catching up? I'm still catching up. Okay. I'm like I'm almost there. Okay, good, yes. So this part, again, should be the easy part of the class. You know, these are just individual topics. Once we start working on the main project, it's a bit more uh, detailed, right? So it's going to be more difficult to catch up, right? So uh, try to catch up as much as possible. And uh, yeah, the next part should be pretty fun because you get to put everything together into one project. All right, if there's no more questions, I'm going to stop the video here. So guys, take like a, you can take like a 10 minute break. If you wanna come back and then if, if there's any comments, I can stop by you know, and work with you guys. Huh?